Bonjour and welcome to Le Mans for the fourth round of the 2020 Michelin Le Mans Cup. This is one of the highlights of the year, an absolute must attend for all gentlemen drivers. And we have a fantastic grid of 34 cars. Let's check it out. As a curtain raiser to the Le Mans 24 hours, Road to Le Mans adopts a different format from the other Michelin Le Mans Cup events. There are two 55 minute races instead of a single one that's two hours long. There's a mandatory pit stop of two minutes in each race, no refueling is allowed, and the minimum driver time is 20 minutes. Instead of 25 points for a win, there are 15, nine for second, third takes seven, and so on and only full season competitors are entitled to score points. After the first half of the season, DKR Engineering leads the standings by 12 from Graf, 15 from Cool Racing. DKR's Jean Glorieux is very experienced at Road to Le Mans. He won race two in 2017. It's amazing, uh, the feeling here, the, the myth is, is, is growing like each year and uh, the, the championship is very tight as well. Other ones are uh, approaching. This weekend can make or break the championship. If uh, you win both races, then we get a major gap. If you have two in DNFs in the worst case, then championship will or may be lost. In both cases, it, it will be a very spectacular and uh, interesting weekend. In Graf's number 26 car is a new boy, Rory Pentonen, learning all about Le Mans this weekend. It's really tight, so uh, every single race will be important in the championship. We have uh, had a really good pace, especially now the last race. I think we have figured out some uh, setups uh, on the car. We will do everything to, to score as many points as possible. We have four or five cars competing for the championship, and uh, I hope we will take it. Iron Lynx tops the GT3 standings, 22 points clear of Kessel Racing, their closest rivals. In the number eight Ferrari though, Reno Mastronardi is another Le Mans rookie. I'm very confident that this weekend we'll do well and we'll, we'll uh, keep our first position in the championship. Uh, obviously, the Kessel team is also a strong team, so uh, we know that we have to fight uh, against them for the rest of the season. So, uh, so far, we still have a good margin in, in, in the points, so it looks great. Hi everyone, it's our first time here at Le Mans. It's a mixed feeling between I'm scared and excited. And please follow us uh, through the weekend. Fantastic. Uh, wanted in the past to be here and today uh, for the first time I'm here uh, driving the Ferrari from the Michelin Le Mans Cup. The car was, uh, was perfect. We were uh, the quickest. Giacomo obviously gave me uh, a few advices on, on, uh, on the track, uh, especially on the braking and on the most difficult corners around the track. And that's helped a lot. I'm very confident that we'll do very well. Yeah, it was wonderful. Uh, I have been dreaming of Le Mans for my whole life. So uh, to finally be here, it was amazing. Uh, love the track. The atmosphere here is crazy cool. But my first uh, six laps, I think I did now in the free practice. I had a lot of traffic. I was mostly scared of the track, but uh, at the end, it, it, it felt good. So uh, we have a really good crew and uh, we will have a good car for the race and the qualifying, I'm sure. 
It's a dream, driving on the full Le Mans circuit's unreal, it's awesome. I just needed to find my feet really, I was able to improve, didn't make any big mistakes, the team worked well, we've got a good setup. I'm confident, Bruce Joanny is helping me with tips on how to get the best out of it here, it's pretty bumpy, but I really enjoyed it. GG3, Reno Mastronardi claimed pole for race two. His best lap only a second, slower than teammate Giacomo Puccini, whose time was good enough to start third for race one. It was very good. It was a little bit difficult qualifying because we had a few, uh, few yellow flags. So we had slowed down a few times, but I was able anyway at the end to put together a very good lap and uh, that's been enough to get the fourth pole of the season. Rory Pentonen was four and a half seconds quicker than his teammate as Matthias Kaiser had a crash during the first qualifying session. This is maybe the hardest track in the world, so yeah, I'm happy with P3 for sure. I think I will start the first race at least and uh, do my best to climb up and we'll see what happens. There was a nine second gap on the 13 kilometer track between the best qualified time of Christoph Cresp and his driver coach Bruce Ioanni. 15 minute qualifying is tough at Le Mans if you're not in the right pack of cars. The race will be different, but I am frustrated. It's a learning process. Time to go racing. Friday afternoon at Le Mans. 34 car entry, 23 in LMP3 and 11 in GT3. The LMP3 pole sitter, the Ligier of United Autosports with Wayne Boyd in the number 23 car. The GT3 pole to a visiting car, Lamborghini Huracan number 63 of the Triple F racing team by ACM, Hiroshi Hamaguchi is the man aboard. Road to Le Mans 2020 underway in September. Wayne Boyd on pole position. And a challenge immediately from Jean Glorieux, the number three DKR engineering car. Side by side, right behind, battling all the way up to the Dunlop chicane. Busy, busy field. Wayne Boyd jumps away. Here's the battle for second. Nicola Maolini for Cool Racing, David Drew for Real Team. Then Jean Glorieux down to fourth in the number three DKR car. Just ahead of his teammate Hugo de Vilda in number one. Down to Arnage with Murad Sultanov. Chasing the LMP3 car of Stefan Adler who spins off the curbs. Disaster for the Iron Lynx Ferrari. Race leader in GT3, Hiroshi Hamaguchi, Triple F Racing Team by ACM. Newcomers to the series this weekend. United Autosports in charge in LMP3. Britain's Wayne Boyd out front. Strategy now could be very important. Into the pits comes the race leader. Two minute mandatory pit stop for safety. No fueling, just the driver change. David Perel getting ready to take over the 74 Ferrari. Michael Bronseski in the pits, the South African ready to jump in the Kessel car. On board with Moritz Kratz, oh, spins it around out of the chicane. Castle Racing Ferrari, this is Turkey's Murat Kuhadaroglu. Trouble in the forest, S is, and he's in the gravel. Race leader is Edward Corpe for Cool Racing. Lawrence Hur chasing him down for DKR Engineering. This could be a big battle towards the end of the race. Exiting Indianapolis, super slow-mo, and look at the Nielsen car running all the way through the gravel. Being chased down by Matt Bell. On the cool pit wall, there's Marie Smith with the beard watching the action. On board with Lawrence Hoare, sweeping into Indianapolis. That's the leader right in front, Ewa Koope from Cool Racing. The 37 car in front by inches out of Arnage. Slowest corner on the circuit in a great effort. Lawrence Hur pulls out. 
and goes by for the lead. Checkered flag is out. Victory for Lawrence Hur. Won race two last year. Teammate Jean Gloria also won in 2017. An experienced duo, and it shows. GT3 win, Andrea Caldarelli for Triple F Racing Team by ACM. DKR taking the top spot, both cool racing cars on the podium ahead of the two Uniteds. Triple F Racing taking the GT3 win for the number eight Iron Lynx and 74 Kessel Racing Ferraris. DKR Engineering have done it again. It was a crazy last lap. I uh, was constantly behind Eduard. I was uh, fortunate to put pressure on him and he made a little mistake which allowed me to pass him. I'm really happy about it because at the, at the start Jean dropped a bit and I was a bit concerned about uh, closing the gap. But uh, in the end I uh, push as hard as I can and uh, I made it. GT3 all about Italian cars, a Lamborghini ahead of a slew of Ferraris. It's a great feeling, honestly. It's a fantastic track, the first time for me. We came here with, uh, without you know, big, big ex expectation, but just to, to do our job and do it good. And um, th this is the result of uh, a great teamwork. Decent uh, stint, I think. I was, think I was 13th when I came in for driver change. When Matthias start, pushed the starter button, it didn't start. So we was in the pit for 10, 15 minutes before we got the engine running and he could go on the track. So uh, really disappointed race. We're starting P3 tomorrow, so uh, it will be more interesting and uh, try to keep up the pace and uh, give them a fight in the top. Can you even imagine starting on the big Le Mans circuit with an LMP3 car? It was crazy, it was incredible. We had some top speed issues, but the most important thing is I loved it. We achieved our, our goal because we finished second uh, ahead of the Castle car, so I think it's, it's, it couldn't be any better than, to, than what we did. So we are leading on the championship again, right, like we were already, we increased the gap. So we have to keep going like this until the end. Road to Le Mans race two on Saturday morning and after heavy overnight rain, the track is still treacherous. Nicholas Leutweiler will not make the start. The track declared wet the start behind the safety car. But there's some confusion among the teams. Murat Kuhadaroglu, the Turkish driver, brings in the Kessel Racing Ferrari to put slicks on. Some have started on slicks, some on wets. Lights out on the safety car will go green at the end of lap two. Pole sitter Nicola Maolini for Cool Racing leads the field away. Again, the number three DKR car is right there in second place. And at the green flag, Nicola Mela for racing experience, passing Patrice Lafargue in the Edexport car, change for fourth place within the first couple of meters of green flag racing. Good restarting by Mela. GT3 pulses are there. Reno Mastronardi, seventh overall in the Iron Lynx Ferrari. Battle for the lead. Here comes Hiroshi Hamaguchi in the Lamborghini. Triple F Racing 
team by ACM car up the inside and through he goes. Not a full season entry, he won't score points. Lots of LMP3 action and trouble. Looks like Daniel Schneider in the United Auto Sports car may have had contact from behind. That was the battle right outside the top 10. Here's our race leader, Nicola Maulini for Cool Racing. Second and a half, nearly ahead of Jean Glorieux. DKR car skating over the curbs through Indianapolis and down to Arnage they come. Track is drying fast, but the off-line areas are very wet. Pit window open at minute 22. Jean Glorieux comes in immediately, and that might be a masterstroke from DKR. Look how damp it is just offline, though. Cautious in the pit so he doesn't overshoot. Cleaning the screen of Muck and the driver change to Lawrence Hur. Winning combination in race one on Friday. Can they do it again? Maurice Smith is in the pits as well for Cool Racing. These guys finished on the podium. The American is out. Matt Bell gets in, but trouble. That is one of our rookies, Christoph Kresp. He's overshot the team as he comes in to hand over. Trouble two for Esteban Garcia. Had to come around the nose of another car. Busy, busy pit lane. And of course, with a mandatory two minute stop for the driver changes, although they don't have to line up under a fuel rig, they are all stationary a long while. It's only a 10 minute pit window as well. And that means this is a very busy pit road here at Le Mans. See how slippery it still is, even in the pits. There's the number eight car. Leading point scorer in race one and was leading for the points in race two as well. Trouble here, this is Nick Adcock, the CD Sport car in Indianapolis. Got onto the very wet stuff, couldn't slow down. Nicola Maulini, the race leader, comes in for Cool Racing. And it seems to work out that either you come in first or last if you're up front. They've gone with last. Lots of changes in the order during the stops. And this is the race leader, Hugo de Wilder, for DKR in the number one car, going very slowly on the Mulsan. Battle for fourth place in LMP3. Matthias Kaiser for Graf. And Lawrence Hur in the DKR engineering car that won race one. Lap six of 13, but this might come down to being a time race. Here's the battle, Wayne Boyd and Bruce Juani. Oh, Juani trying to close the door. Wayne Boyd was already there in the United car. Into the pit lane just as the pit window is about to close. Hugo de Vilda, number one car is in and he'll hand over to teammate Wolfgang Triller. Cleaner the screen as well to give Wolfgang a decent view. Race leader for Cool Racing, Edouard Corpé, again led in race one, but was passed before the end by the number three DKR car. And it is the number three car of Lawrence Hur that is in second place. Matthias Kaiser, third for Graf Racing, the driver from Liechtenstein. Further back, battle for seventh place. Bruce Schuani closing in on the CD Sport car of Jacques Wolf, the number six machine. Gary Hauser ahead of them in six positions. So this is six, seventh and eighth. Joanny, the host of French Top Gear now. Former top single seater star and experienced sports car racer, but hasn't been racing for several years. Bruce Joanny piling the pressure now on the six position car, shedding a bit of his rear bodywork as he does so. Battle for fourth place, Colin Noble for Nielsen Racing. All over the back of the Graf entry of Matthias Kaiser. Kaiser goes for the dry racing line, but Noble on the inside sweeps through. Always a brave move at the speeds they're carrying up to Indianapolis. That's the fastest part of the circuit. Colin Noble moves up to fourth. Giacomo Puccini, Iron Lynx number eight, Ferrari in trouble, gets onto the wet. Through the gravel he goes in the Porsche curves. Wow. And Giacomo Puccini here, working on the Iron Lynx car of Paolo Roberti, the ex-touring car star in the number nine car. That's a change for sixth. Mm. 
Edouard Coupe leading the race from Lawrence Hoare and the gap remaining just about two seconds. If anything, he's starting to creep away. Coming up in third, the cool racing car. Number one for DKR back in the pits. Looks like that Mulsanne problem has not gone away. It's a real shame for them. Making good progress still is our GT3 leader, Andrea Caldarelli, in the Triple F racing by ACM Lamborghini. Goes by the Spirit Race Ferrari that's a lap down. Caldarelli took over from Hiroshi Hamaguchi. Now he's coming under pressure. Three seconds behind is David Perel, the South African, in the Kessel Racing Ferrari. And that gap is coming down. There is Perel chasing hard now. Iron Lynx versus Iron Lynx, the eight car ahead of the yellow nosed 77 car. And it's Piccini on Piccini as well. Giacomo ahead of Andrea. Race leader Edouard Carpe in traffic. And a little wriggle there from both he and the United car that he was passing. Malta Jakobsen for RLR M Sport. Broken front splitter. Rushuani just in front, but Jakobsen closing in fast. Team are watching the monitors and the timing. Jakobsen goes inside outside the long way round. That's a heck of a move to pull on a man as experienced as Rushuani. Fantastic stuff from the Dane. Final lap of the race, Edouard Coopé for Cool Racing. Two cars on the podium in race one. And they are going one step better than second. Top step finish, Saturday morning at Le Mans. The warm up for the 24 hour race. Road to Le Mans race two, Vichy goes to the number 37 Cool Racing car. It is their second win of the season and the one that they will remember for years. In GT3, Andrea Caldarelli ahead of David Perel. Perel has reeled him in, hand over fish. The checkered flag awaits. There's not room for a drag race. The Lamborghini takes it. The Ferrari in second. Two wins for Triple F Racing. Cool on top of the podium, DKR between the two cool racing entries with the seven Nielsen car in fourth. And it is Triple F, Kessel and Sky Tempesta, Lamborghini and two Ferraris on the GT3 podium. It's a really good revenge for the team and for Edouard. Hor is uh, more experimented than, than uh, Edouard, so it's a, a really good result and I'm really happy to, to finish first in Le Mans. For all three teams, a great view from the Le Mans podium. Congratulations to our podium finishers in LMP3. And this has significant championship ramifications as well. With two strong finishes to the number three car, DKR Engineering go 19 points clear. The two cool racing teams and Graf clinging to their title dreams. It's amazing to be on the podium in, in, in Le Mans and uh, today the race was more exciting than yesterday and uh, it just shortened my life for two years. It was too exciting to be honest. A second win for the Lamborghini crew, Kessel in second place and Sky Tempesta fourth in race one, make it up to third in race two. But again, the Lamborghini had the tiniest advantage over the Ferraris right at the end. In the championship, Iron Lynx now have a comfortable lead in the standings over arch rivals Kessel and only four points between Kessel Racing's two cars. What a weekend it's been, especially for our rookies. We raced in Le Mans, we made it. The first one, but not the last time. Coming back up from 17 on the grid, awesome. Unfortunately, today we had not, not a very good race because we started with the uh, rain tires, uh, but the track was uh, completely dry and uh, we lost a lot of time. Our goal for the, for the race was not to make mistakes and finish both races, so the, which, uh, which, which evolved. I mean, we did very well.
It was better, but it was tricky conditions with half wet, half dry. Adolle Mar track is wonderful. That's been my childhood dream to do this, and now I have done some laps on it, and I hope I can do it again. That's it for Rose to Le Mans. Next time out, 10th of October, round five of the 2020 Michelin Le Mans Cup at the Alto Duomo Nazionale di Monza. We will see you there.